We are in Madisonville, and just like her neighboring towns, like Mandeville, and literally everywhere else in this state, Madisonville was inhabited by several native tribes prior to European arrival. And these tribes were Akola Pisa, Choctaw, Chifuncta, Bayugula, amongst others, and the nearby Chifuncta River would play a massive part in the development of Madisonville. Now we keep saying that word, Madisonville, because that's what it's known as today. But originally, this area was a native village known as Chiconte. There is archeological evidence that prehistoric humans lived around Lake Pontchartrain about 10,000 years ago. Paleo-Indian arrowheads have been found in St. Tammany Parish. And these tribes were mostly hunter-gatherers. Things like boat building, fishing, crabbing, net making, paddle making, and decoy carving are all related to these tribes settling on the lake and are still done by Cajuns and natives to Louisiana. The first European to set foot in what would become St. Tammany Parish was Pierre Lemoyne sur Diberville in 1699. Iberville was exploring the Mississippi River in a canoe. Now, a shortcut to the Gulf of Mexico was recommended by his native guide, which led him through Lake Maurepas and past Manchac. About sunset on March 27th, he entered the lake, which he christened Pontchartrain. And you can watch our video on that history via our channel. Diverville disembarked at Goose Point near what is now Lacombe. He found the mosquitoes intolerable and land too marshy and dismissed the area as totally unfit for settlement. The Acolapisa would soon migrate from Biloxi followed by the Choctaw. After the Treaty of Paris was signed in February of 1763, the British won rights to settle in West Florida, which was the independent nation above Lake Pontchartrain. British land grants were given to people who took an oath of allegiance to King George. French settlers arrived on the banks of the Chifuncta River in April of 1773. These French settlers would name the area Coquille, which means shells in French, that were abundant along the river and in the lake. In 1779, the news of native attacks in Mobile frightened the French settlers so much so that they packed their belongings and abandoned their homes along the Chifuncta River. And it would sit abandoned until April 24th 1783. By the time of the Louisiana Purchase in 1803, the village of Chaconte and Barrio de Bacfalia, which is now known as Covington, had begun to develop as trade and transportation centers. The Port of Bayou St. John in New Orleans began trade excursions across Lake Pontchartrain to the settlements, and vessels began to be built on the North Shore. This area wouldn't bear the name of Madisonville until 1810. A man named Jean-Baptiste Baham of Barsac, France, yes, that's a real place, arrived to settle his 1,000 armpits of land he got from a Spanish land grant. It was then renamed after the U.S. President James Madison. Now, for those of you who don't know, James Madison was the Secretary of State during Thomas Jefferson's presidency, and he basically persuaded Congress to fund and ratify the Louisiana Purchase. Now, in 1810, President James Madison claimed the West Florida Territory to be part of Louisiana, and Governor Claiborne established boundaries of the parish, naming it St. Tammany, probably after Tamarind, a, a Delaware tribal chief. Now, once it was renamed Madisonville, it was soon considered a resort community on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain that was favored by wealthy New Orleanians escaping the hot summers, but mostly escaping yellow fever. During the Civil War, Madisonville remained under Confederate control, even after New Orleans fell to the Union. Transporting goods across enemy lines proved difficult, and Madisonville and surrounding areas suffered economically, which lasted for decades after the war ended, during Reconstruction and all. The vast pine woods left intact until this time began to fall to lumber companies. Tourist trade also resumed, with six steamers making excursions twice a week to carry people from New Orleans. The growth of Madisonville and all of the North Shore communities took off in 1956 when the longest bridge over water in the world was built, AKA the Lake Pontchartrain Causeway. During the exodus from the cities of the 1960s, which was known as White Flight, the parish entered a period of moderate growth. These were often older, retired people who had no need to commute to the city jobs or really families that didn't agree with the desegregation of the public schools. More often than not, they had grown up in New Orleans and followed the tradition of summering on the North Shore. So in a sense, these people weren't strangers to the area, but seasonal residents who decided just to settle in permanently. In recent years, growth was spurred by Hurricane Katrina, 
With many families losing their homes on the South Shore, they sought higher land and just wanted to make a new life, but they still wanted to remain within the New Orleans area. Even with this growth, though, Madisonville remains a quaint town along the riverbanks of the beautiful Trifuncta River, still maintaining a small town charm. Annual festivals draw crowds of people to the area just to experience the culture of a town bustling with seafaring history. The historic Otis House, built around 1890, is located across the Trifuncta River from the town in the Fairview Riverside State Park. Visit the Lake Pontchartrain Basin Maritime Museum and learn about efforts to preserve Madisonville's lighthouse, built in 1837, which is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. You can also visit the Madisonville Museum where you can see all kinds of history about Madisonville. Now there are festivals year round, such as the Maritime Museum Wooden Boat Festival, held in the fall, and the Crude of Chifuncta Mardi Gras Boat Parade. And we couldn't bring you all this information without your support on Patreon. And we'd like to thank all of those who have contributed already and encourage anyone watching this video right now to consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Louisiana Dread. For more Louisiana history, horror, folklore, and culture, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Crosby, and this is Louisiana Dread Quick History.